Hello, best practices. They, they gave me the little label for designer on the talk, and I apologize if you're a designer. This is actually a little more developer. But uh, designers, I do want opinions for sure from designers because we're going to be talking about UI best practices in Joomla through Addo. Um, everything I'm saying is about standards, but I haven't really set the standard yet. I've given a start. Nothing's set in stone. Uh, I want opinions. I actually want this to be more like a roundtable discussion. I'm hoping, and I know there are some component developers in here. Uh, hopefully there's some people that do UI. Hopefully there's people that have had frustrations with UI in Joomla and that are excited for the new stuff, uh, which really kicks ass. My what? Oh, th no. Sorry, I'll, I'll turn my voice up. Uh, my name's Kyle. I am a usability engineer at eBay. Uh, we work on a massive Joomla site. It's not even really a site. It's, it's, it's a framework. It's a platform application. Uh, I do tons and tons of UI development and UX development every day. So let's dive in. I want to get through this kind of quickly uh, just to go over what the JUI, what everything is real quickly uh, and actually get to the conversation part of this. So the JI, JUI, I covered this in my keynote and if you didn't see it, uh, it's all the goodies that we have for UI in Joomla 3.0 that ships in the core, uh, which is the most important thing for the standards because previously people rolled their own thing because there was nothing in the core. So it's Joomla, it's great, you can do whatever you want, and people really did. Uh, so much to the point where nothing looks the same, right? There's no UI standards. <coughs> it's the Wild West, basically. Uh, so we have Bootstrap, we extend Bootstrap, we have icons, we have jQuery, jQuery UI, and chosen select boxes. We have a whole bunch of stuff. And you can literally build anything. Uh, it's not just for, at first people kind of didn't understand why I was putting JUI in the front end identical to the back end. Uh, they thought that the back end is only GUI, so the, the front end is usually a site. Why do I need all this? But you can really build any of this UI, uh, shopping cart, uh, blogs, magazines, whatever. Whatever ha you, you have in Joomla, you can build it with Bootstrap. And the really cool thing about it is you could typically build it without writing one line of CSS or less. Uh, this is a big change in 3.0. Templates now uh, have all the power to actually do what they're supposed to do. Uh, the template is supposed to do the styling. It's, supposed to, it's truly a theme now in 3.0. So basically what it does is you have template.less now in your template folder. It calls out to the JUI. You have the power to pull in whatever you want. You should pull in pretty much everything. But you can pull in any UI elements you want. Uh, the cool thing about it is what you do is you copy over any file that you want to create essentially an override for it. But it's not an override. It's native. So your variables.less is all your colors and things like that. Uh, icon moon, you can change all the icons if you want. Uh, and you can get crazier. You can pull in the mixins from Bootstrap. Totally customize everything. Compile it out to one template.css. And that's, that can drive all the component styles. Uh, it's not all these components with different styles fighting each other. It doesn't have to be. It can really be powered from your template. So this is targeted towards component developers. If you do need some custom styles in your component, which is pretty inevitable, you'll need a little bit, um, try to use the global bootstrap variables. Do it in less. Uh, try to copy the standards that we've started. The reason because then template developers can come behind and they can even they can cancel out, you can, they can turn off your component styles and, and import it into their template.css. So again, we don't want to get in this situation where we are today, where component CSS is loading and battling all over the place, right? So please uh, include your less files if you do that. Use less, first of all. And if you don't know less, start learning it. It's awesome. It's a huge time saver. Uh, and then make it optional. Have a parameter in your component to turn off the CSS you're going to include it because you don't want to have all these support questions because your, your component's not styled, right? But at least give us the option to turn it off and then use it in the template. So let's dive into it a little bit and just see where we are currently. Um, in the back end, we have span 2, span 6, span 4 for C panels. Uh, if you're not familiar with the bootstrap grid, everything equals 12, right? So this is something I'm trying to drive for control panels. For every component, I would like to have, it doesn't have to be identical, right? 
but it would be nice if the, you have a cPanel for your component. So for instance, we have Project Fork. Uh, it'd be nice if our sub nav is over here for the cPanel, if we have things like maybe recent activity or maybe some stats, something like that. Quick links over on the right. Uh, and you can get creative, like I say. It doesn't have to be identical, but at least make it to where the users, when they install your component, they can go from one to the other, and it actually feels like one site. They don't have to keep relearning the UI for every component they go to, right? For the sub pages, uh, this is pretty standard. We have a, a left nav with, well, this is new actually, right? We moved the sub nav from across the top, which uh, just wasn't versatile enough. If you had a ton of links, it would wrap, right? So we now have, once you get to your component, it's an immersive experience, right? You don't have to keep going back up to the sub nav. You stay in the left nav, you have filters over here if you like, and you have your list over here, right? And again, equals 12. You can get more creative in some of your sub layouts, right? So for the article editor, uh, we want the user experience to be focused on actually using the damn text editor, right? Yeah, thanks. Not having to scroll way down here and have a box this big, right? So you can get creative, you can spin things around, right? And what we did was we made the most persistent parameters. They stay over there while you're tabbing through everything else. And this, you don't have to follow this, but this is the kind of sub layouts where you can vary it. It doesn't have to be every page the same, right? One thing to note, for your components, you can just dynamically include the submenu. And what happens is the template, the admin template takes care of the first outer spans. It has the sidebar for you, and then over here, it's 10. But you can nest the grid in Bootstrap, right? So in here, this needs to equal 12 again if you do it like this. So a big change was the, the toolbar, right? So uh, a lot of people freaked out when I moved things from the right to the left. Uh, and the thinking behind that was that your mouse travels more over here, right? And if you're right to left, it flips and you travel over there. So it's kind of irritating to have to keep going back and forth for things like save and new. Uh, of course, put your new button first. Put your apply button first, which is just save uh, now in Joomla and use button success, which is Bootstrap's green. And that's really it. Uh, I see a lot of people now creating somewhere the green button's kind of in the middle over here. Just put it first in your code, right? So uh, another thing that people are doing, and uh, it, is Nick in here? I always pick on Nick from Keep It Backups. His stuff is way better now that he's using Bootstrap. Uh, but he's still doing some things that are kind of non-standard. So he's using tabs for his navigation when he should be using a left nav for his sub-navigation. Tabs should be actual tabs, like end page, uh, breaking up the content of the page into tabs. So navigation, end page content, right? So a big thing now is responsive, right? I'm sure most of you were just in Steve's talk. Uh, a really simple thing you can use in Bootstrap that we use a lot in the admin is the hidden phone. There, there's a whole bunch of utility classes like hidden tablet, hidden desktop, or visible desktop, visible phone. Uh, hidden phones what we use the most just because in the admin there's a ton of tables and we need to be able to hide a lot of the information that's not, it's not the most important information, right? We just need to show stuff like the title, the status, and really simple things. So. The cool thing about this too is if, if, you're using, uh, if you're using a component that's trying to suppo support both 2.5 and 3.0, that doesn't do anything in 2.5, so you're not, it's not gonna battle each other, right? It's only, gonna, it's only gonna turn on when you're using a bootstrap template. So a new thing we added as well was the, the toggle. Uh, we have JavaScript and Bootstrap markup that will turn certain radio buttons into toggles. Uh, what you do is in your XML for, for the form for your component, you add just class equals button group, and we do all the magic for you to make it happen. Um, don't use it for everything. It's really, it's really easy to, to overkill this. I think it's really good for stuff like yes and no, uh, show and hide, and the published, unpublished trash, right? 
So it does provide a much better user experience in my opinion. It's really easy to open up something and see if the title's hidden or if it's published or unpublished, right? It used to kind of make me, I had to scan the page a while to actually figure out if something was published. So we're using chosen select boxes, and what it is, it's just these fancier select boxes, and uh, we have a limit of 10. If there's more than 10 items in there, it'll put a select box up here, so you can type and automatically filter to get your results. Uh, some people kind of freaked out when we dropped that in there. Uh, you theme in the house, Sasha? Uh, because you don't want to blanket on everything, right? So what we did was, I don't remember who did the commit, but somebody did a really nice commit for an actual behavior. So you can decide in your component, in the particular view, if you want to drop it in there just with this one line of code. And if you don't want it to cover all select boxes, you can just put like a class name, and then actually it'll only apply to things, select boxes with that class, right? Which is important because people do crazy fancy stuff with JavaScript and select boxes. So this gives you the power. So, and I promise, I've talked about this, I need, I need to get all this documentation on the JUX site. I want to rebuild it on 3.0 so we can actually build the site and document it using the same thing. Uh, it's currently on kyleledbetter.com forward slash JUI. And one of the pages is the icons. And it, we list all the icon font icons that we have in the system. Uh, and we show you how to use it. You can either just use regular bootstrap markup or you can use this, it's a little bit different, but it's the icon uh, style of icons. And the cool thing about, well there's a lot of cool, thing about, uh, cool things about font icons, but one of the cool things is you don't have to use the icon white class like Bootstrap has. Bootstrap changes from two different images, right? If it's a, if it's a white sprite, this is a font. So if, if the button is white, the icon turns white. <laughs> So here's the deal. This is completely different, and we had a lot of like Twitter debates about this. Um, we're kind of flipping the notion a little bit here, trying not to write a lot of CSS. Uh, I got myself in a mess with our eBay project because we kept rolling out all this crazy UI. Every week it was a new UI for something, right? And every time we'd write custom CSS for it. And our CSS was a mile long, and every time we had to, to fix something, we had to fix it in a thousand places. And so, I started being super, super strict about not adding styles for things, not adding custom CSS. And what it does is it just makes it super simple, especially if you use Bootstrap. When you update from version to version, it's not a pain. Uh, it's not hard to maintain your styles. And what you do instead is you get creative with your HTML markup. With, with all the UI elements that Bootstrap gives you, you can really move them around, combine them, and use a lot of different things to create any kind of UI on Earth. So, speaking of any UI, this is going to start going through really quick. Uh, this is some of the UI that I've created without writing any extra CSS, right? First, we're going through one of my uh, mock up Joomla site, and this is again kyleledbetter.com forward slash JUI. But I go through a lot of things there, but then we get into eBay. And this is the project that we work on, but you start to see there's just any UI that you can possibly <coughs> imagine, and this is all without writing any CSS. So just imagine going through your Joomla site, having all these components loading, doing all these different things, all powered by the same CSS, all looking the same, same user experience, completely cohesive, right? This is gonna be a completely different Joomla. Uh, I, I'm still kind of excited and waiting because it's only just starting to happen. People are making what I would call Joomla 3.0 compatible components right now, but I want some native. I want people to rewrite stuff from scratch, and everybody is actually. Uh, K2 and those guys are rewriting. Uh, Jump Social, you name the most popular components and they're actually making really brand new versions that are gonna be completely bootstrapped. So that's what I'm kind of waiting on. Uh, that's all for the presentation. I wanna start talking. Uh, so I want a conversation about the stuff I've shown you, right? Like component developers in the room. I know that you themes here with Zoo. Uh, Parth, you guys have components, right? Who, who all is a component developer in here? Cool, we actually did get some, okay. So, what do you guys think? Is this, is this like, are we doing it wrong? Could we, be, could we tweak some stuff, right? Do you guys hate the, the toolbar buttons on the left? Should I move it back on the right? Uh, is the sidebar on the left more useful for the sub-nav? Or does it get in the way?
So Can more documentation? Plan? Yeah, yeah. You say, you're saying you need more documentation on less? Yeah. On less <coughs> in general or on how, or how we use less? So I, I do think that we, we, we're very close to the standard bootstrap use of less. Uh, we do need to document the extended stuff that we added. So for an example, uh, and, and I'll get to you in a second. For an example, some of the stuff that we're adding in when we extended it, uh, if you use Bootstrap, you know how for tables, you can use table striped for alternating row colors, things like that. We also have list striped for you can use ULs with LIs. We have uh, row striped, so you can use divs. So we, you can use all the different uh, markup combinations and it actually outputs all the same. So we need to document that. And that's, that's on me. I got to get that done. Yeah. So I think, I mean, you have Bootstrap. Almost all our new extensions, we are bootstrapping from day one, even if they are on 2.5. Okay. But we are not sure if you're doing it right. We're not using GUI. Right. So we're just using so he's saying that, that they're, 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 they're starting right now. And I know we talked about this. With their components, they want to support 2.5 and 3.0. Uh, I need to write some good documentation because I, I'm figuring this out myself. With Project Fork, uh, we just released 4.0 beta. Woo! Uh, and it's completely rewritten from the ground up, and we're supporting 2.5 and 3.0. And I was able to make the admin completely native to 2.5, Blue Stork, and completely native to ISIS and 3.0 with just a little trickery. Nothing crazy, right? No extra CSS, just applying the right classes in the right places. So I need to document all that. I think this gentleman was next. In the back end of Joomla? Yeah. It's a great question. Uh, we need to add that. Uh, I want to get that in by hopefully 3.1. Yeah, definitely want to Yeah, okay. So, so what we have. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 go. So, so for those of you that don't, don't really understand what, what we're talking about, in the back end of Joomla, you know how you can edit your CSS file from your template? So that's bad practice with less. You need to edit your less file and compile it out to CSS. And right now, you currently can't do it. You would have to do it offline and then upload it to your site, right? So there's PHP compilers. Uh, and you could do it. You could just fire it off when you, when you edit and save, right? There's much more potential cool things that we can do with that. Uh, one, one of the things I hope we can figure out is or one of the complaints I got is that you're loading all this bootstrap UI for every page and you're not using it for every page, right? And it's not massive and it's really nice if, if it's just that one style sheet anyway, it's not so bad. But what would be really cool is if component developers could say which UI elements they were using in the page and then it could fire off a compiler or something like that in real time when you hit that view, right? Like, so you're loading minimal UI and compiling it on the fly. I think something like that would be really super cool. Uh, Peter had a question. Yeah. yeah. Well, th there's tons of there's tons of free uh, compilers for for PC and Mac and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So, but you can also do it via PHP. Uh, so for we actually have a PHP compiler for the core code, but since it was a licensing thing, we we didn't get to release it yet. But basically, you just you just fire that script and it does it with the proper code style to be submitted to the core. And, and if, like I said, if you haven't been using less, like, first of all, you can actually just write native CSS and less if you want to, right? But th you're missing the point if you do that. When you really start playing around with, at first you start with the variables, right? You're like, oh, this is super cool. I can define all my hexadecimal colors in one variables file, and it changes everything when it compiles out. That's your first cool 
cool factor, right? But then you could do so much more than that. They have what they call mix-ins, and that's probably the best part of Bootstrap. And I didn't even get that at first, right? I just loved how, how good the UI was and how, how much variation they had. Then you start playing with their mix-ins, and the most simple mix-ins do stuff like the border radius, right? Who in here hates writing Mo's border radius, WebKit border radius, all, all the different ones, right? So it's just shorthand. You just do it one time, and it, and it compiles it out for you, stuff like that. So a huge time saver. It makes your code more clean. Uh, it's not a bad thing to have a million different less files because it's going to end up compiling it out to one file anyway. Uh, so, so we know the CSS, it used to be bad practice to import all kinds of CSS files. But this helps you keep it separate, and in the end, it's going to compile it out to one file anyway. The dynamic compiler? Yeah. So when we can, when I compile it out, when, I mean, when I compile it out on, on my computer, it's instant, right? But with the PHP compiler, yeah, it's just snap done. So I, I, on any decent server, if you were doing it on a server, I gotta believe it'd be really fast. I think Joomlar, in their T3, I think they have a compiler in in the latest version. Do they? Okay, cool. You can actually just set it up. Um, if you're using less, you could actually put the dot less file and declare it in your HTML file and all the dependencies. Oh, and true. Get okay. Less Yeah, that's the cool thing. That's the exciting thing about this to me, actually. Like, this stuff is all so new. Uh, there's going to be problems, of course, but we're going to discover all kinds of really cool new features that we, we didn't even think about, right? I know one of the most simple things is going to be, uh, if you're editing a template, uh, you can put all these variables, that are that the hexadecimal colors that are in the variables.less. You can make a nice UI to change all that and then compile, right, for templates. And then magically, <coughs> you've changed every style for every component you have in Joomla, like with one click. So. I think we're going to see some really cool stuff. Uh, I want to get back to the, the UI standards with the component developers in the room. So, so I think that's kind of like a migration kind of question too. If you if you have a, a current template that's not Bootstrap, uh, one of the cool ways. Let me actually close this. Uh, on that JUI site, oops. I need to update this the information a little bit on this page, but I have a less link up there. This is kind of what the template.less file looks like. And all it's doing is going out to the media folder uh, where JUI is, and it's importing all the different bootstrap less. Uh, and if it's one that you want to override, you can see that down here, it's just modals.less. For this particular template, I just dropped in modals.less in the less folder of my template, and I changed what it looks like, right? Um, for a template that you have now, what you would do is you would take template.css, you could rename it to template.less, put all the stuff at the top of it and compile, and then now you support bootstrap. It won't be perfect, but it's a lot better than nothing. So, so that's, that's, that's basically the um, uh, responsibility that the template developer has, while there, there are probably a lot of um, uh, well customers out there who have an existing template. Right.
Right, we'll so see. Right, so, so I will say the first thing, right, and this is kind of harsh, but if it's for Joomla 3 IDO, it should support Bootstrap, right? That's my first thing. That's my first statement. But we do actually have something. Uh, it's not that fancy. It's not auto-detecting, but there is a snippet that you can have in your index.php of your template that, that you can set it to true. And, of course, you need to put this in your index.php. But it'll bring in the, the compiled CSS files for you right there if, if, you, just want, if you just want to import them. It'll go out to the folder. We actually have these same files all compiled out. It, it, it puts three files into three CSS files with all the bootstrap styles. Yeah, it could get messy, but we actually do that too in Project Four. We. So, so along those lines, I still, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of like namespacing for CSS with a wrapper, right? Nick has something for that. In SOS, you can do that. We will do that. Oh, okay. Basically, just, uh, you can just do hashtag Joomla and just put a, you know, parent div and a small component inside. Right. And only your component will be Apple fit. The rest of the template is Apple fit. So along those lines, I do want to release something for 2.5. I do want to, uh, actually get in the core, we talked about this for a while now, uh, to bring bootstrap support into 2.5. Uh, you would have to rip out all the stuff that would battle, just like you're talking about, like all the heading styles and a lot of the layout stuff. But at least for a lot of the UI, I'd like to have a non-conflicting uh, version of bootstrap and the JUI in 2.5. So it is a goal. I'd like to have that. Right. And you know that could turn into a support nightmare, but yeah, that's that's definitely the best case scenario. And and that's what I was saying earlier. I, I've used some of these components as 3.0 compatible versus native. Uh, and and the, the big point I'd like to drive home about that is that there's such better potential for UI and UX in 3.0 if you do build a separate version, or if you do at least think about rebuilding some views in your component, because this is the first time since we provide you essentially an SDK, as a component developer, you can actually focus, you don't have to bring in all that UI, you can focus on the user experience, right? You can actually say like, God, I don't have to worry about all those libraries I was lighting before, loading and all the styles, all the custom CSS. Now I can actually focus on making my component work better, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I actually think it's fun, right? But that's just me. I, I'm used to writing, you know, 10 different views a day. So I, I think it's a blast to be able to keep iterating on it and making it easier to use, right? And I'll say that about 3.0 actually uh, as a whole right now, it's not perfect, right? We touched every single file in Joomla. I touched most of them, right? 
And when, when you got to do that much in a condensed amount of time, you can't get it perfect. But I'll say the cool thing about it is now that we're in a place to actually iterate on it, we can we spend a lot of time on the article edit, but some of the other editing views, you could tell like we didn't actually test every single tab, right? So I want to go now and make the whole thing easier, maybe in 3.1, 3.2, and focus on iterating. Which kind of brings up the question about um, versioning, which is, you know, 3.5 being the so-called major version. Yeah. So what does that look like right now? I mean, is, the, is that really going to matter in this scenario? I mean, is 3.5 a... Well, I know 3.5 for one thing was pushed back, right? And, and upgrading is definitely getting easier, right? The whole actual upgrade system itself is getting easier. Uh, and if everybody is adopting these standards, I think there will be a lot less things breaking, you know? Like, it, if everybody's following the standards, even if we change, drop in a new version of Bootstrap, it'll magically, stuff will just be better in new features, right? It won't, we won't have a lot of these compatibility problems that we have now. using the bootstrap variables but when we add stuff uh, we'll right when we add things I'm being really strict about making it feel like bootstrap I'm following their standards as, as closely as possible for the the way we write the code and the naming conventions yeah all the extent all the extended UI stuff is in bootstrap yeah, extended we have extra variables and variables that less too so, so is there an, uh, <coughs> Uh, no. There's no centralized any dictionary on why we're doing anything. That I need to. R I want to roll out a new UX site and really start documenting all this stuff. Uh, well, you can go to Media Julie and, and look at the, the variables there all Sure. Yeah. So for, to learn a lot, I do. I do advocate for component developers to really kind of go into the Media JUI folder, and also uh, for template developers, look at Protostar, the new template. Uh, I really tried to build that as intelligent as possible, and it's not just like a demo template. I wanted it to, to feel like a usable template that you can follow the methods. Uh, so check out the less folder in there, <coughs> and, and you can essentially use that as a starting point for your template if you're new to it. Yes, sir? I won't promise consistency between any major version. Uh, I think that's the point of having different major versions, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, it'll be consistent throughout the three series, but for four, don't, we don't even know what 4.0 is. If it's going to be on the platform, if it's going to have UCM, it's going to be completely different, right? From The web is going to move in a lot of different places in, a, in three or four years. So we probably, Bootstrap will be gone. Something better than less will be out. jQuery might be dead. You never know, right? So we can't, you have to keep moving forward. If you, if you, if you don't jump into major versions, we're, we'll have the same problem we've had where we look like Mambo still, right? Right, that's why we have long-term releases, right? I understand.
Right, that is a long ass time for the web. It really is, man. So that's why we have these long releases, right? And that's why 2.5 is gonna be around. If you don't wanna move on it, don't move. You're good. Yeah, it's a long time. More component developer opinions. Now these are all good questions, but I just I just really want to start talking about this stuff. Uh, I, I, is anybody actually? I know you guys are, are building some 3.0 stuff. Is there anybody actually building 3.0 component stuff yet? I mean, how do you feel? Is is, is stuff working out? Yeah. Good. So if you can't hear me saying that they, they are enjoying it because they're focusing on their code, they're not focusing on the layout and stuff like that like they used to. So yeah, good. I'm glad to hear that. One of the best, uh, I mean, our expectations were not known for that good looking UI. And uh, we just built a JGIL, which was the donations component. We, we wrote John Gill, which we took uh, before PLC. And the first opinion that we got was that it looks beautiful. That's not a comment we are working That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So you're saying that they're already getting credit for their component looking beautiful, yeah. and, and they certainly never got that kind of feedback before. So. All we have done is spent probably about 15 of bootstrapping. That's it. Awesome. Just a paint job, right? Good, that's what I want to hear. One thing we did was we did more things to bootstrap, but with the inputs of what we got, what the fan and what we use, how they use, to help us write more better uh, components. Good. Uh, and when something I really want to drive home to component developers that some people do, but not many, uh, when you're making your cPanel dashboard, make those all admin modules. Because then it, what a user can do is they can actually use those modules on their real dashboard, too, if they want. And then they can have a dashboard that they log into, and it actually has everything about their site instead of the popular articles and the logged in users, right? If, you, if, if you're using e-commerce, you want to see your sales. If you're using Project Fork, you want to see the, the active tasks and things like that, right? So if you want to actually get a real dashboard, we have to have some modules so you can move around and customize it. Peter? Right. Yeah. So your your zip file gets smaller as well. True. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy it. So we're saving bytes. People don't have to download bigger files from your your server. You don't have to add all the images. You don't have to add all the CSS. Good. <laughs> so uh, ultimately, with the idea of the module that you just mentioned, it, it would be a great place to find it. Because, uh, for example, I don't know if everybody knows about Gecko Board. Gecko yeah. Board. Gecko Board. So you can, I can pull all kinds of different services and I can like up in marketing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen it. Look at all that in one place. It would be kind of nice to go to the one site and see. Okay, this is all right here in one of you. And especially <coughs> if you're selling uh, some kind of platform to your clients, they can go in and see that and you know see the different different things changing what you're doing even if you're just updating these articles or right. you know, different things like that. Actually get a, a pulse of their site from their dashboard, right? Imagine that. That's well, crazy. Yeah, we're kind of like yeah. together. And something I was thinking about something I was thinking about with uh with Steve's talk about responsive is something really cool that we could do that we haven't really tapped in yet. Uh, <laughs> if you're using your dashboard on a really wide monitor, right? Like on your standard Mac monitor, we could probably reveal some extra stuff and different spaces and, and module positions and things like that so you can have, you know, additional, so if you if you really treat it like a dashboard so you can really have all kinds of stuff, right? And as you resize, the, the less important stuff disappears, right? Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if you could actually have crazy stuff like SEO or whatever else you could use it and you could actually come in and manage your content and you know, go back to how it's performing. It's more of right. a business rule than... Actually get a real heads up of everything. and you're hiding stuff that is still loading, essentially it is still loading? Or you can yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just hiding it with okay. CSS, right? So it would be better, I mean, it, you know, if you did it in PHP, if you use conditionals for stuff like that, then it actually wouldn't load it, and that would save load time. But I don't think that a lot of these elements are tremendously heavy, uh, but it would be nice if we, if we actually 
could give an option to do it in PHP or CSS, right? So that's a really good idea, actually. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, and, and you bring up something that I'd really like to, to, to get going is more of the community documentation too. Uh, you know, maybe we should just do like Bootstrap and a lot of people do and actually just put our documentation in Markdown files and put it on GitHub so people can just, just you know, submit pull requests with their documentation updates, things like that. I really want to make it easy for people to con contribute their documentation because I sure as hell can't do it all along. Uh, there's a lot of good ideas I have that I need to get out there. I, I do need to write it down, but I need a lot of help, right? And I really want to get make this collaborative. Uh, one of the things I didn't bring up that I, I just I just thought <coughs> of uh, component developers also, if there are things that you absolutely hate or things that you are missing, uh, rather than just tacking on your component, talk to us, talk to the JUX, and actually or just contribute it yourself. But let's let's actually add it to the JUI so everybody can use it, right? Because component views. Uh, it's all the same thing. You're all looking at data, right? Like, so if you need a UI element, you could probably bet that another component needs that same UI element if it's missing. So let's all share back and forth. Let's stop creating these little islands where we'll get right back to the same position that we started in. So I would beg for that. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's on the wrong spot. Should I add it to the issue tracker that is there? You just add a issue to the tracker, it's, right? It's a feature. Oh, right, right. Feature tracker. There's yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Much more of the pro on, on the tracker. Yes, sir? Yes. Yeah, Peter is helping, and where is he? Huh? Where's Matt? Oh, there you are. They're, they're working on some dramatically new cool stuff for the JED. Uh, so this, you're doing that? OK, awesome. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, and I didn't get to. Actually, uh, I, I want to I work with them. Uh, they're, they're changing the, the review process on the JED. And they're going to be running 3.0, and I want to have fun with them and hopefully collaborate with other people on doing the UI for it, uh, making the, the, the actual process enjoyable for submitting reviews and things like that, right? So that's going to be a really cool thing. Yeah, I know. Imagine <laughs> that, right? You get madder as you're reviewing, so your stars get lower, right? You're like, damn it. Did you have a question? Okay. I thought you had your hand up. Joe? Yeah. So, uh, Sorry. You next. I think the left now shifts in the phone. We have some, we hide, s we hide some elements like uh, in the content. We hide some filters and stuff because it would push the content way down. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's pretty easy. Cool. Okay, uh, I think we're running out of time. Sorry we got started late, guys. Uh, had some technical difficulties, but I appreciate it. Thank you.